And Sharesh, the story takes us in nicely now to our special coverage of another TV animal show. It's wild and it's uh, live. It's in East Africa. It's the wildebeest migration and we've been covering this for the past few days, of course. And uh, for the very latest, we go to our correspondent, Panina Karibe, in Kenya's Masai Mara. Welcome again, Panina. Uh, what uh, can you tell us where the wild beasts are right now? How is their migration progressing today? Well, good morning to you, Adrian. Nice, warm and sunny here at the Masai Mara in Kenya. And I can tell you this migration is indeed showing signs of taking off any time from now. If you look just behind me, I'm sure you can see this wildebeest around here. Now, these have already crossed over into Kenya from Tanzania Serengeti National Park. And these are what we call scouts. They're the young male adults who actually map out the routes for the whole herd. And they've already made their way here to Kenya. And as I said yesterday, they actually uh, marked the, the path for the rest of the herd to follow. So this, of course, is a very clear sign that this migration is just about to begin. In fact, right at the border of the Masai Mara and the Serengeti National Park, there's so many herds of wildebeest. They're just about to cross the Sand River, which acts as the border between the two parks. And this tells you they're crossing and making their way over into Kenya's Masai Mara. So anytime now, we will be beaming you the live pictures of this spectacular event live from the Masai Mara. Now, of course, Adrian here with me is a conservationist, an expert who's going to tell us more about this great event. His name is Charles Oluchina, a conservationist with the Nature Conservancy. Good to have you with us, Charles, this morning. Thank you, Penina. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm great, and you? Excellent. Perfect. So, the, of course, everybody's talking about the wildebeest migration. It's a major attraction here at the Masai Mara. So we can, of course, talk about the economic value of Masai Mara. Absolutely. I mean, when you look at Masai Mara, think about it like the Great Wall of China in terms of the value to tourism. The gross domestic returns from Masai Mara are anywhere about 150 million US dollar per annum. And you haven't factored in the other service industry that obtains because of transportation, uh, because of tour farms, because of the beverage and food industry. So it's a tremendous part of the economy of Kenya. Mm -hmm. And we value it that much. When you look at the community level, we have returns of up to 20 million US dollars trickling down to homestead, to rural communities who are part of this big ecosystem. Uh, considering that the revenue that derives from here, improve infrastructure, you know, pay for medical medical expenses. It is a tremendous value and asset to the entire Kenya country. And of course we haven't talked about the employment. Absolutely. We can put on really on the on the term that we have about ten thousand people seasonally employed as a result of this brick migration and just the entire economy that surrounds Masai Mara. So it's a really tremendous industry to count on our economy. Right. Yeah. Okay. So let's bring in, of course, the issue of the Serengeti National Park, because we cannot speak about the Masai Mara without mentioning Serengeti. It's one ecosystem. But what are the challenges they encounter? Because I know at the moment, I don't think they have cross-border laws, do they? Yeah, absolutely. Because, I mean, look at it. Uh, Masai Mara is just one-seventh of the entire ecosystem. Serengeti takes about the other 65 percent. And the deal of it is that Kenya and Tanzania have different uh, wildlife and natural resource management regimes. So you find when you introduce tourism access in both parts, there is quite some uh, worked out mechanism that can make cross-border to one more easy. I think that's one of the areas that uh, authorities on both sides of the park have been working on. Right. When we look at security and management objectives, on one side you're experiencing the migration, on the other side they're banning the ringland, you see. So getting on the commonalities of how we need to manage it as one unit, I think is something that Kenya and Uganda need to work on under the auspices of the East African community. But, but it's not just about tourism, Charles. There's also the issue of conservation. I mean, the animals, for instance, like we were speaking earlier, and you said animals do not know about borders. So is there anything that exists that protects animals on both sides? That's a very interesting question, Penina. I mean, uh, I think both countries have conservation as their driving factor in terms of setting aside these spectacular landscapes. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think when it comes to really providing that for which counts for the habitats, and the integrity of the ecosystem, right. uh, countries tend to apply different management regimes. So uh, you find there's sometimes active burning on the southern part, which is the Serengeti side. But Kenya, we tend to leave it the natural way. The animals come and mow down the grass, and the rains come, and the grass regenerates. So I think there is definitely need to have conversation mm. across 
the two communities, both right. Kenya and Tanzania, and to be able to figure out how best to secure this landscape in perpetuity. Because as you rightly say, these boundaries just exist on paper. The yeah. animals have got no clue about it. Exactly. They move when they want. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's talk about um, the attraction that is the Maasai Mara. And of course, when that comes, to, the first thing that comes to mind is the wildebeest migration, because it only happens here in the entire world. But is that the only attraction when you speak about the Maasai Mara? Is that the only the unique thing about it? Absolutely. I mean, Mara is a theatre that we got the whole great, you know, the great species exist here. Uh, the big five. You you'll get the, the endangered rhino species here. You'll get as much elephant as you want to see. Uh, you you get the elands. You get all the, the the wild dogs. You know, you get the wild species, the carnivores here. So it it gives you the entire complement. So as a tourist, as a visitor coming to Kenya, you are not bound to be disappointed. But there is also a rider to it. You know, the Maasai people by themselves, having retained their culture over the ages, just make it a very rich experience. Yeah. Seeing how they've been able to blend over hundreds of years with this ecosystem, mm -hmm. their their pastoral way of life and how it fits into wildlife-based tourism. It's just amazing. And you know, it's amazing Chelsea mentioned that because I know the Maasai Mara is probably one of the very few areas in the world with the largest uh, population of lions and the Maasai community which lives right next to the park, which by the way has no border, have somehow managed to find a way of coexisting. How is that? Absolutely. The incentive is very basic because look at it this way. When the Maasai is get the benefits from wildlife-based tourism. You know, it pays for their schools, for their hospital. It's just like their livestock. So it's what we call their bank on the hoofs. So they are able to view wildlife, not from an antagonistic way of view. It could take off one cow occasionally, but the value of having this wildlife and the jobs created here makes it have ownership. And all over Africa, where conservation has been successful, it's been driven by the communities themselves. Right. So the communities in the Mara have seen the value of owning and managing it, like it's part of their stock. Yes, so that has been a very good incentive, and it has made sure that human wildlife conflict is kept at a bare minimum. Right. Exactly. Okay, so when we are talking about the attractions of the Maasai Mara, and you mentioned the rhino, and something else came to my mind, did you know that this is actually the only park in Kenya with an indigenous population of black rhinos? Absolutely. That's I mean, amazing. It's, it's quite amazing when all over Africa, I mean, rhinos, down South Africa, they're losing the rhinos day and night. But the intensity with which the Maasai Mara has managed to conserve, the few remaining... Well, sorry, we've lost our link there, but uh, that was uh, Panina Kaliba and uh, speaking about the wildebeest migration, which we're covering here on CCTV News.